inside the coach's office with another episode of the Pikel Podcast. Rutgers just finished a week one and one with a terrific overtime win over Nebraska at Jersey Mike's Arena, then falling at Illinois. We are joined by the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Steve Pikel. Coach, how you doing? I am uh, getting prepared for <laughs> for Purdue right now. Um, you know, had had some really good things happen last week. Especially, it's nice to be at Jersey Mike's. Um, beat a really good Nebraska team in a challenging game from start to finish. Um, we continue to get a little more healthy, and um, hopefully we can add some new additions too in the next coming weeks you know, to our roster. But tough game at Illinois. Um, got that game you know, back to two, you know, two possession game with 10 minutes left after not playing great at the beginning. Um, just didn't have enough to kind of hold on, and Terrence Shannon obviously returning um, really helps them a great deal, especially in transition. He's a hard guy to guard, you know, too, for us in the league. But uh, one and one last week and hoping for a better outcomes this week. All right, let's talk about the Nebraska game for a second because that game, I thought you finished the first half outstanding. And then Nebraska, they kind of jumped on you again. They got up by a dozen, and I think it would have been very easy at that point. The crowd was obviously a little restless. But, boy, I tell you, the way you guys fought back and the atmosphere in the last Eight minutes and then into overtime was unbelievable. What did you see out of your guys the way they crashed the glass, the way Cliff played, and so many contributions? Well, Cliff has had a fantastic two-game stretch here. Like, you know, great real estate and just playing like the leader um, that we need him to be. But I love the fact that, you know, early in the year we struggled rebounding-wise. Um, you know, we're getting to a better place in that area. And certainly in that game, we you know, the most rebounds ever you know, for us in, in Big Ten play and 25 offensive rebounds. So, you know, we play hard. That was a different level. Obviously, home court huge, you know. Um, winning 85% of our games over the last five years isn't just our players. It's, it's the fans, the students, the energy that they bring. You know, the people in that building I'm so appreciative of. Um, they really make it a tough place to play. And now we got to number two. I think they're the best team in America you know, coming to us and our crowd needs to factor in again, our, our fans, our season ticket holders, all those people got to make it, you know, that great, great environment that they have and have given us that great advantage. And we'll talk about Purdue coming up in just a moment because that game is going to be wild for sure. Um, one other one on Nebraska, then we'll move on to Illinois real quick. And then Purdue, of course, uh, the guard play, I thought, with Nebraska. Derek's numbers might not have been great, but I thought he played a great game. Austin Williams defensively has been amazing. Jamichael Davis, Austin with a big three. Just the way that has progressed throughout the course of the season now. You know, really, you know, and Austin being healthy, you know, because that's always an ongoing battle. But, um, you know, we're playing some young guards. Jay Mike gives us great energy always. Um, Derek, I thought, was just spectacular that night. 14 points, 8 rebounds. like, And that has helped our rebound in total. When our guards rebound, it's a good sign for us. And he got 8 assists yep. and 1 turnover against a team, A, that beat Purdue, but not only having a historic season in Nebraska. So um, did it against great competition. They need our guys, all of them, to be a little more consistent. And that's part of... You know, the, you know, some of the frustration I, I have every now and then with, with, with this group, just consistency. Like, you know, we've had times where we've been a great rebounding team. Then other games, we've had times we've been a great rebounding team. Then we put together offensive nights like mm -hmm. Nebraska, where we scored 87 points in a basketball game. But, you know, we just got to be more consistent. I think, you know, as the health keeps improving, if we can add a couple more pieces here, um, you know, we still got a long stretch to go, and there's a lot of basketball left to play, and, and we are improving in a lot of areas. And you can tell. And I know the Illinois game, if you look at the final score, you'll say, wow, they got blown out by 23, but you didn't. Um, it was a 55-51 game. I thought your team played really hard. It was also one of those games where box score-wise, the rebounding may not have been great, but I thought you guys were in position and just couldn't grab the loose balls. And that, to me, was the difference. And then Terrence Shannon at the end. You know, 100%, you know, like we had our opportunities. And when you go on the road, you got to, you know, complete the deals. Those 50-50s got to go your way. We got some tough bounces, um, you know, two during that stretch. I thought Noah played really, really well, um, got in foul trouble, you know, like so you kind of need when those guys have it going, you need them to be on the court. Um, so we hit some different, you know, roadblocks, but they're a top 10 team too, and they're very experienced, and Shannon – and Coleman, and then they get all the grad transfers in the portal that they got. You know, they're, they're a really tough basketball team to play, and you have to play elite level to win on the road. And we, we played hard, and we played 
for moments. And, and like you said, we were down during that course of that game and to drag back with 10 minutes left to be within two possessions was where we wanted to be. But we hit a four minute stretch there where, you know, we couldn't find the rim and, and Terrence Shannon kind of took over, you know, getting to the rim. And, that's why he's on the draft board. He's, he's a unique kind of player like that. No doubt. Now, there are no easy games in this conference, so I'm not <laughs> saying that there are. But this stretch between Illinois and then you come home and you got Purdue. I mean, you guys are in a stretch. I think it's five games in the next 14 days, which is a lot. Purdue coming in. I mean, Zach Eady is obviously the, the engine that makes that team go, but there's so many other pieces. How about this challenge coming up on Sunday? I mean, major challenge. I mean, Zach Eady's better. So he was National Player of the Year last year. So figure that one out. Um, he's even better than he was before, but you know, the pieces around him are older. Um, they got a transfer out of the portal. Um, Jones, who's an elite defender and has given them, you know, a guy that's very consistent. Um, Smith, the point guard has improved going into his sophomore year, but they still have Gillis and they got lawyer and they got, you know, guys that have experienced a lot. It's a very difficult team to prepare for. I'm glad we have a few extra days. Two, to A, get ourselves healthy, um, banged up, going on the road. We had played so many road games, too, um, in a row, three out of our last four. It's been a tough stretch. And now to get a couple of home games and get a little time to, you know, reinvent ourselves a little bit, hopefully get a little closer to adding two more guys to the roster, you know, bodes well for us moving forward. And these are the types of game where the crowd, I mean, is the sixth man. And we've seen it in the past. What do you expect out of them? It's an afternoon game. I got to, you know, one thing man. I got to tell the crowd, like, it, Always, I know I can count on you. And you know, we need to be uh, Rutgers at its finest. You know, Rutgers Nation, the, the riot squad, the cheerleaders, the band, you know, our students need to be there. First of all, it's going to be a great basketball game. They all are. Um, you get to see the best player in the country, too, which you don't get that opportunity very often. Um, and, you know, it's just the same environment that we have to go into on the road all the time. And we need to continue to make. Jersey Mike's one of those really, you know, great environments. And so I'm thankful everyone shows up. Make sure we're a little bit louder this time. And that'll be 1 o'clock on Sunday. National game, too. Also on Sunday afternoon and at halftime, a very special uh, honor presentation, uh, a ceremony for the Knights of Honor. And you've got your first class that you guys are putting mm -hmm. in. And Mike Dabney, Horace Copeland, and, of course, Eddie Jordan. Just talk about that for a couple of minutes, how special that is. I will tell you, um, first of all, um, Hollis and Eddie and Mike, three of the great representatives of Rutgers University, and obviously proud that they're Rutgers basketball uh, players. Um, you know, probably long overdue. Um, their incredible stretch of basketball it was the, the best era in Rutgers basketball history. Um, the records, the numbers, the wins, and the kind of people that they are. So um, that Rutgers Nation can appreciate those guys um, as they move up into our ring of honor. And uh, I just think it's going to be, you know, it's a great day. And, and they're the kind of people and players, obviously, that, that represent our program so, so well. So proud day for them. I'm glad for their families. Again, long overdue. These guys really deserve it. But uh, we're getting it done. Makes me sad that Joe B ain't here for it. Joe B. He would have loved this thing. Uh, he would love it. And I heard all the stories from him through the years. So I feel like I know these guys. I wish I coached them. I've had, sure. I would have a lot more wins if I coached these guys. But um, I feel like I know them through his eyes and all the great stories and the type of workers and students and people that they were. So I feel a little, a, a little part of it that way. But he'll be watching and he watches all of our games. And, and you know, I miss that guy. Yeah, so do I. Coach, thanks for a couple of minutes. Thanks so much. That does it for another edition of the Pikel Podcast. Rutgers, Purdue, Sunday at 1 at Jersey Mike's Arena.